Good morning, Year 10. In this video, um, I'm going to go over the five questions for today, um, for Wednesday the 10th, uh, sorry, week 10 of Term 3, um, which is our last, uh, like, you know, learning lesson of the term, so that's good. Um, and uh, I'm going to go over the five questions and then we're going to talk about what we're doing today. So for question one, we need to solve these two um, equations using the elimination method. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I normally do, is I'm going to label each of these. So there we are. And um, now I want to look at them and I want to consider, uh, is it better to, do we have to change them at all? Do we have to multiply them by anything? Do we add or do we subtract? So um, here you can see that 3x minus y is equal to negative 1 and x plus y is equal to 5. So because we have a 1, like a the same coefficient in front of the y's, we don't have to multiply them by anything. But now we have to ask, do we add them or subtract them? Well, if we subtract them, we're going to have negative y minus y, which would then be negative 2y. So subtracting them is a bad idea. Um, so instead, I'm going to add them. Negative y plus y is nothing, 0. So that looks like the best option for us. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add them. The other way to remember is um, if they have opposite signs, you add. If they've got the same side, you subtract, sign, you subtract. So let's do it. So I'm going to take 1 and I'm going to add 2. So when I do that, I like to write it like this. So I've got 3x minus y is equal to negative 1. And then I'm going to um, subtract. Oh, sorry, I'm adding. I'm going to add x plus y is equal to 5. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to have 3x plus x is 4x. Now, minus y plus y is 0, so I'm going to leave a blank there. Is equal to minus 1 plus 5 is 4. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I get left with x is equal to 1. I'm going to highlight that because I'm almost done. I've got half the answer. To get the other half, I'm going to substitute x in equals 1 into a different equation. So um, I can either do 1 or 2. I think I'm going to do 2. So sub x equals 1 into 2. And you'll see that if we have 1 plus y is equal to 5, well, that means that y has to be 4, because 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's the answer. So I've got my y value and I've got my x value. By highlighting both of them, I'm saying I know both the answers. For question two, we've got um, explain what change happens to the graph from a to b. So here is a, and we get y is equal to x squared. And here is b, it's y is equal to x squared plus 2. Cool. So what's changed? The only thing that's changed, and I'll do it in a different color, we've added 2. So uh, if we're just adding 2, let's have a look at what the graph would have looked like. So this is what the graph would have looked like roughly. I would have had my plane and I would have had a happy parabola there. By adding 2, it's now going to look like this. Happy parabola there, and it's gone up by two. So everything about it has gone up by two. It's not just, it's not just the um, the middle. It's everything. The whole thing shifts up. So my answer for this question is the parabola shifts up by two, and that's all. That's all we have to do there. Now, question three, we need to factorize x squared minus x is, uh, sorry, x squared minus x minus six. We need to factorize that. So the best way to do that um, is remember the product sum method. So the product sum method looks like this. So the product needs to be negative six, and the sum needs to be negative one. So what two numbers multiply to get negative six and add to get negative one? So I'm just going to write down a couple of options, and if I think it's the right option, that's where I'll stop. So um, 2, negative 3. If I multiply those two numbers, I'll get negative 6. 
if I add them, ah, oh, yep, I also get negative one, so that's good. Um, the other option that might have been a common one to start off with would have been this. But if you did that, you would have a positive one as the sum. So it's not that one, it's going to be this one. So now that we have that, we can rewrite this as x plus 2, x minus 3. And if you wanted to check, you could expand it out and see if you get the same answer, which you should. Great. Next, find x to three significant figures. Now, it's a non-right angle triangle, at least as far as we can tell. We can actually check if we add these two together, and if we get 90, then it is a right angle triangle. So I guess we'll look at that first. 58 plus 32 is 90. Oh, okay, so it is a right angle triangle. But let's say we weren't thinking about that. What if we, we didn't consider the fact that it's a right angle triangle? We've actually got our pairs, the opposites that are paired up. So I can use the sine rule for this one. So I've got sine. Oh, we want to find x, don't we? So the x should be on top. So I'm going to put x on top. And the, op the opposite of x is 32. So sine 32 there. It's going to be equal to 27 over sine 58. Cool. Now if I um, multiply by both sides, sine 20, uh, 32. We'll get x is equal to 27 times sine 32 and sine 58. If you type that into your calculator, we'll get 16.87 x is equal to 16.8714. Um, but we need to three significant figures. So that's the first three non-zero digits. So the answer is going to be 16.9 uh, uh, centimeters. All right, three sig figs. Okay, great. Um, I wonder if it would have worked the same, if we would have gotten the same answer if we used the fact that this is a right angle. That's a challenge for you. I'd like you to check and see if you get the same answer. Um, if you get a similar answer, like it's off by a couple of decimal places, it's still considered to be correct. It's just because of rounding problems, okay? Um, but it'd be interesting to see if it was different. So um, the last one, uh, we need to simplify with a rational denominator, uh, one plus root three on two minus root two. Now, just like yesterday's lesson, we need to um, multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate is going to be 2 plus root 2 on top and 2 plus root 2 on the bottom. So you just change the sign of the thing in front of the root. Now, to make it easier, I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to have 1 plus root 3 times 1 plus root 2 all over 2 minus root 2. 2 plus root 2. Now the bottom's the easy one because it's a difference of two squares. That means we have the same thing here, but the only thing that's different is one's a minus and one's a plus. So if that's the case, we can rewrite that as, I'll just write the denominator first, 2 squared, which is 4, minus, because it's a difference, um, and um, the square root of 2, which is 2 like squared, square root of 2 squared is 2. Um, the other way you could do it is to expand this out and see if you got the same answer. Um, before I simplify that, though, I want to look at the top. So I'm going to do, expand this one. So I'm doing the tops and the bottoms um, for the first and for the second. So the first, we've got 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times root 2 is root 2. Root 3 times 2 is 2 root 3. And root 3 times root 2 is root 6. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Then I want to simplify it if I can. Um, now the bottom we definitely can. Um, 4 minus 2 we can simplify to be 2. But the top, that's as neat as we can get it, even though it looks not that neat. So, yep, that's what we're going to do. 
um, I'm going to have 2 plus root 2 plus 2 root 3 plus root 6. And I'm going to leave it like that because it's nice to have the root, square roots ascending um, as you go across. And then it's all on 2. And that's the answer for question 5. Now, the lesson for today, um, we're going to be talking about um, when do you use each of the three methods? Okay, so um, the lesson itself shouldn't take too long. Um, when do we use each method? Okay, that's the heading. When do we use each method? Now, the first and hopefully most obvious time is when you get told to. So just like um, in the question for today, uh, for question number one, it was a simultaneous equations question using the elimination method. We got told to use the elimination method, so that's the, way, the method that we used. The reason why it's important to know multiple methods is because sometimes you can be asked to do it this way. However, there's other situations. So when, um, might make it a bit more clear. When you get told to, use that method, as in the method mentioned, okay? So now let's, um, Let's talk about graphing. So that's generally when do you use each method? When you get told, otherwise it's up to you. Graphically, when would I use graphically? Uh, the first situation is when you get asked to draw two lines on a graph. Okay, so that's one situation. So sometimes you may, it might catch you by surprise that you're doing a simultaneous equation question because it says draw this line. Then it says now draw this line. Now solve them simultaneously. Well, you've already drawn the two so you can just do it graphically that way. It's a bit easier. The other time is, and we haven't really looked at this, but moving forward, like into year 11 and year 12, when you need to draw a non-linear line, like if you're solving a question where, um, for example, parabola is the most common, or a cubic. Um, there's obviously other options, but that's just an example. When you have to draw a nonlinear line, um, it's sometimes easier to draw it and then solve than it is to work with it all algebraically, which is when you're just working with the equations themselves. That's basically the only times I'll do graphically. It takes a long time and um, and a lot of space in your book, and you have to be really accurate. So. The pros, we can see the solution. So you can actually visually see it. That's basically where the pros end because the, the cons, time consuming, one big problem is very time consuming. Um, the other issue with it is that, um, as I mentioned, um, takes up a lot of space. And in general, um, those two things are enough for me to say, no, I don't want to do that. Of course, you might get asked to do it that way, or it just makes more sense because you've already had to graph some lines and then all of a sudden now you're answering this question of simultaneous solution. So that's the only time where I think it makes sense, as we mentioned. So the next situation would be, when do we use substitution? 
And my answer to that is most of the time. It requires the least amount of thinking because sometimes you can just chuck it straight into it um, and then you have to work around with it or you have to work around with it first. I'll talk about that later, but basically you want to use substitution most of the time. But let's talk about specific situations when it's good. When both equations equal the same thing. So the times when this matters most are, so these are some examples here, both equal to x, y, or 0. They're the three most common. The reason why is because uh, particularly y and 0, so y is the y-intercept form of an equation, which we get given quite a lot, so that's one. But the other one is zero, which is the general form. General form is when everything's equal to zero. So if everything's equal to zero for one thing and everything's equal to zero for another, then that means that they could be equal to each other because they both equal zero. So that's pretty helpful. But um, the other time is when one equation is equal to a pronumeral, which is a fancy way of saying a letter. Okay, so that's. Um, so, of course, the ones that we deal with the most are x, y, but it could be a, b, any, any letter, right? So, if one equation is equal to a pronumeral, Sweet. That means that that equation can go into the other one, regardless of what it looks like. Okay, so that's the situation where we might have substitution. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the pros, quick to use. You can go straight into doing it. The other pro is all methods require substitution anyway. So why bother going to another method when you're just going to have to substitute? So for example, graphing, you need to substitute the letters, uh, sorry, the numbers into the letters to make sure the equation can be graphed. Um, where substitution, you're already doing it and with the elimination method, you still need to substitute at the end. So you're already doing it, may as well just do it the whole way through. Um, cons. Sometimes elimination method oops, elimination method is faster. Okay, so even though the pros are that it's quick and easy to use, the elimination method could be faster for a particular question. And that's most of the time when you get told, hey, use the elimination method, it's because we know that's the faster way. Um, like that question is designed to work that way. Um, and the other con is slow if neither equation is equal to a pronumeral. Okay, so that's a segue into the elimination method. The elimination method is perfect to use when neither equation is equal to a pronumeral. Okay, and what I mean by that is you might have x plus y equals something, and uh, you know what, in fact, let's go back up to the question one from the five questions neither of these equations are equal to x or y. So that is a perfect opportunity to use the elimination method. And that's basically all I'm really saying is just, if it looks like that, probably elimination method is the best way to go. So now let's talk about the elimination method. Uh, 
So the elimination method elimination method um, when is it good to use? Like I said, when neither equation is equal to a pronumeral because that means that if you were doing, say, substitution, you'd have to rearrange first and then you can substitute. Where this way you can go straight into a method. Okay, um, another situation is when pronumerals share a coefficient, which is a fancy way of saying number in front. Okay, so they share the number in front. So 2x and 2x, cool, elimination method's the way to go, or 1 and 1. Um, because when that happens, that means if you subtract them, they'll disappear. Or if it's ones are positive, ones are negative, you can add them and then they disappear. So that's the best time to do it. And to be honest, that's pretty much the, the main times to use it. It's a pretty niche situation, but when you do, it is very effective and quick. So the pros works well in some situations. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is, can be used in most situations this is just a comment it's not a pro or a con varying speeds so sometimes it's fast sometimes it's slow the cons and you probably have felt this yourself the least intuitive, as in um, most difficult, because you've spent a lot of your life substituting things into other things. That's something that you've learned for a while. But when we're talking about um, adding and subtracting whole equations, uh, yeah, now we're talking about something completely different to that we've ever experienced before. So it's the least intuitive and it's easy to make mistakes. Okay. And that's 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 the three in a nutshell. So for to finish off, we're going to solve two equations. Oh, sorry, like solve two equations together, so one example, but all three ways, and we're going to see which way seems to be the fastest, okay? So our example, solve x plus y is equal to 9, and um, let's do... Uh, maybe do a subtract there. Negative seven. Okay, there are two situations. Now, it's set up in a way that would be good for um, the elimination method. So let's start with that. So the elimination method. Okay, the problem is we don't have a coefficient, so now we have to do that fiddly thing where we have to multiply. Um, so I'm going to label, first of all, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 2. And I'm going to multiply my first equation by 2, because then I'll have 2x, and 2x take away 2x is 0. So I'm going to have 2 lots of 1, and 1 lot of 2. So if I do that, I'm going to have 2 outside of x plus y is equal to 9 minus 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 7. Cool. So then 
I'm going to uh, draw, draw a line to show that I'm doing some working here. I haven't solved it yet. Um, and I'm going to have 2x plus 2y is equal to 18. So that's true. And I'm going to take away all of 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 7. Now, it's important um, we're subtracting everything. So we've got 2x take away 2x. That's nothing, so I'll leave that blank. But then 2y take away negative 3y is going to be adding 3y is 5y. 5y and 18 minus negative 7, which is 18 plus 7, is going to be 25. So what multiplied by 5 gives us 25. It's going to be 5, but you can also do divide both sides by 5. So that gives me my y. Now I need to be able to get my y on its own. So I'm going to, oh, so my x as well. So I'm going to, on the left here, sub y equals 5 into, I'm going to do it into 1 because 1 has less going on. It's a bit simpler. So that's x plus y. So x plus 5 is equal to 9. Of course, x is going to be 4 because 4 plus 5 is 9. So there's my two answers. Now that question was set up for elimination based on what I mentioned before. We've got pros and cons, as I said. This one was raring, ready to go to be um, a uh, elimination method because neither of them were equal to a pronumeral. They are both equal to a number. But let's try a different method. Let's do the substitution method and see how we go. So the substitution method, still have my one, and, my one and two, but I'm going to rearrange one. So if I rearrange one, I want to get either x or y by itself. Uh, I may as well get x by itself. So I'm going to have x is equal to nine minus y. So I've taken away y from both sides. Okay. x plus y was 9, so if I take away y, I get 9 minus y. So that's my third equation. It's my new one. Okay, so I've got 1, 2, and 3. Now I want to substitute my third equation into, and because I've rearranged 1, I'm going to have to sub it into 2. Okay. So... My second equation, which is 2x minus 3y, is equal to negative 7. So I'm just going to rewrite that there. Wherever I see x, I want to do 9 minus y. So I'm going to have 2 inside of 9 minus y minus 3y is equal to negative 7. And then I want to expand and solve. So if I expand that, I'm going to have 18 minus 2y minus 3y is equal to negative 7. Two, minus 2y minus 3y, that's minus 5y. So I still have my 18 there. And if I take away 18 from both sides, I'll have minus 5y is equal to negative 25. Divide both sides by negative 5, and I get y is equal to uh, 5. And then I would have to do this again. I'm not going to do it again, I'm just going to... I'm just going to take it and put it here. So you just do the exact same thing to get your x value. So two method methods. If you look at the amount of space that they took, the elimination method was better, but it was prepped for elimination, but that didn't mean substitution didn't work. The last one is graphing. I really dislike it for this. Um, if I can do it this other way, I will. Because, now you look at these equations again, I'm just going to take them just so I can work with them down here as well. Let's do that graphically. And do it graphically. So the first thing is we need them to be equal to y, both of them, because that otherwise it's too hard to graph. So I'm going to have to rearrange them both. So I'm going to rearrange one first. I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to take x away from both sides. So y is going to be 9 minus x. Good. Not too bad. The other one, though, oh, man. So if you see this one, I've got, I've got to do a bit more work. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take away 2x from both sides. So I can try and get 3 on its own. I'm going to have minus 3x, minus 7, minus 2x. Now I'm going to have to divide everything by negative 3 so I can get y on its own. You can see it's not nice, it's quite messy. So I get y is equal to, well, negative 7 on negative 3 is just going to be 7 on 3. And negative 2 on negative 3 is going to be positive 2 on 3x. So that's my equation for 2. Not very nice. That's all right. I guess um, that's the point, is me to show you why, which way it is the best one. Um, save the best for last. It's quite clear. Okay, so first of all, let's do... A table of values for 1, and because they're straight lines, I'm just going to do negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so for the first one, it's not too bad. So I've got 9 minus negative 1 is 10. I do it for 0, get 9, and I do it for 1, I get 8. Okay, for 2, I do my x and my y. I'll do it for negative 1 first, 0 and 1. And I'm going to have 7 on 3 plus 2 on 3, negative 1. Okay, I get 5 on 3. And I'll do it a different color. 5 on 3. I do it for 0, I get 7 on 3. And I do it for 1. I get 3. Well, that's nice. I get a whole number. Yay. Um, it's a lot better than what we had before. Um, for a good measure, I'm going to check what negative 2 looks like. Ah. So I just did negative 2 as well. I'll do it in pink here. If you do negative 2, you get 1. That's helpful. Like, you know, if I have to do it this way, I want to try and do it well. So let's do it. So with the rest of this space that I have, I'm going to draw a massive axis. And let me make that just a bit better. So I've got my x, got my y, and I want to draw this. Now every second line I'm going to make one, okay? Actually, to make it even easier for myself, every third line is going to be one. Um, no, that won't work. I'll do every second one. So this is zero. That's two, that's four. Is there someone on a motorbike outside? That's very nice. No, nope, so that should be four. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's consider the first one. So we've got when x is negative one, um, y is 10, okay. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's my 10 dot. And zero is nine, so that's going to be there. And then one's eight, which is going to be here. So see how massive I had to draw this? This isn't nice at all. Anyway. That's my line all the way over there amongst all my working and everything gross okay next um i know I'll, i know i wrote it in a weird order so i'll do negative two first so when it's negative two it's one okay so there you go that's my first dot when it's negative one it's five on three okay so that's um i'm not going to do that dot just yet let's do one and three that seems to look nice Okay, now if I just connect those two dots, I'm sure the other ones will fall into place. So let me do that. There we go. That's my two dots. I've turned them into a line. So let's just double check. Now what's five and three anyway? That's a decimal. That's 1.7, wait, like six repeater. So that means, yeah, that looks about, that's about um, one and two thirds. 
and then seven and a third. Oh, so two and a third. That's yeah, that's about right too. So you can see why maybe having whole numbers would be better. Anyway, I've got my two lines, and you can see where they overlap. They overlap at um, four five, which we knew we did it a lot quicker in two other ways. Probably the other two ways took together just as long as it took to graph this. The last thing I would want to do, just to make it look nice, is say that this is um, the first equation, x plus y is equal to 9. And the other one is uh, 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 7, just to make sure that it looks quite nice and neat. But the other methods are better. Definitely think so. So that brings us to the end of the lesson and the end of the end of the term. Um, so um, we'll be doing a next top, a different topic next term. Um, so hopefully this is a good summary lesson um, to bring it all together um, and doing one example in the three ways. I think we can all agree that graphically is the least the our least favorite way. Still valuable, just our least favorite. Um, substitution elimination are better. But trust me, um, it's important to get good at elimination, but if you're just good at substitution, then that is good too. Anyway, I hope you all have a good holiday, and I'll see you next term. Thanks.